Hello and welcome back to Mario 3D World. Last part, I've defeated Histocrat and beaten the third world, and now we're on to the fourth with Ant Trooper Hill. Let's go. This world is, well, all about desert. Or at least the overworld is. Interestingly enough, the worlds are mostly not just, you know, about one theme that the overworld promises, but actually are about many things. Which is, in my opinion, interesting as an idea, and fairly well made in execution. You know, considering that most of the levels are enjoyable. Of course, some side-scrollers are still really annoying. Also, that wasn't intended. Well, it's no problem, I guess. I just... Do this and... Skip ahead. Don't have to... Uh, take the long path. Of course, this is no speedrun, but like... Yep, there's the second cat bell. Also, these ants are really interesting because they can't be defeated by jumping on them, especially the big ones. The, the small ones can be defeated by, I think, ground pounding them or defeating them with a cat swipe or something similar. Just holding A or B helps with um, going up higher. Also, there's... Oh, that was a little unfortunate, but I still managed to get over there. And as I said, Luigi with the Cat Bell is quite possibly the most powerful character in this game because... Yeah, you just need a bit of ground next to the flagpole and you're easily going to reach the top. No problems whatsoever. Um, and whilst the whole world doesn't revolve around one thing, I also think it's a bit, you know, too little. You know, you have a little too few desert levels. It's essentially the exact opposite of the Mario Bros. 2D platformers. We have essentially only the world about this exact one topic, which can also get a bit boring. But yeah, the levels are generally very well designed and, you know, this one is very fun. Piranha Creeper Creek. I think these out. Hold on. These levels have a very interesting quirk in that you have to take out piranha plants in order to get a star, I think. You can get help by utilizing the well, touchpad if you're playing on the switch pad, or the other, or the pointer. Forgot what to call it. Okay. I was so sure there was a star here. Well, maybe not. I guess there's just a star somewhere else. Oh yeah, right, you get spat out here. Of course, the cat suit helps immensely, but I'd really had like to have had the... Um... The fire flower. This bonus room is really easy. You essentially, again, like in the first 4-1, you just have to hold B or A, so just jump. And that was even the first star, so we didn't- I didn't miss anything. Great. Thought I missed something. Right here, you need to go up. Run a bit, and you can get the stamp and immediately enter the pipe. And now we're spat out here. And get a star. So we can instantly take down these two sleeping piranha creepers. Interestingly enough, 
piranha plants have been an enemy with extremely many variations over the years in Mario Bros. And, you know, many Mario games in all, all in all. Like, aside from just having the normal piranha, they have the fire piranha, the poison piranha, walking piranha plant, um, the piranha creeper, big piranha plants, more notably even, um, even my stupidity apparently. Yeah, okay, I thought I could make this. Damn. Oh, we're back here. Okay, I guess, and I'll just run it back, literally. Oh, you can't reach max speed if you're going up and down. At least up slopes, I guess. But, with the help of Peach's float, we can just clear this section a bit faster. Of course, we build up a bit of speed, so we have to be uh, quite a bit careful. But it's not too hard. I was just dumb. Sometimes, due to her float, Peach is a bit hard to control, but it's generally alright. It's not too much to it. And another level cleared. And we got the pipe stamp, I guess. And as I already said, we have gotten, oh, mid-boss time. Over one-fifth of all the stars by now, which is pretty good. Also, Toad House time. Pick a box and that's random. One rule of thumb though is, if you only get a mushroom from, let's say the big box contained a mushroom, then the next time you go into another toad house, the big box will be the jackpot. This is because it always alternates between the two, at least in my experience. It could be that I'm wrong, but who knows. Right, I just needed a power up. To defeat the Brawler Blockade. These ones are really weak, you just chuck them into the lava. You can even defeat them by throwing their bodies at them, which is kind of weird, but okay, I guess. And then we just get the star. Very easy. This level is generally fairly simple. All of these defeat the enemies and get one star levels are super easy, so it's generally not a challenge. Oh, two more levels. Alright, which one's the next one? 4-3, Beep Block Skyway. Oh, that's a cool one. But we have to Tanuki Leaf, so we should be fine. And of course, Peach. Oh, we also get the Double Cherry. Alright, we're just supposed to not fall off. Oh, we don't even get a star for this. But I can remember needing both um, a few copies. I'm not sure why, but sometimes Peach's float doesn't activate. This level though is pretty cool. Ouch, damn it, I think that's pretty bad, but in case anything bad happens, I need to just, you know, um, activate another controller. Honestly, this level is pretty fun, considering that you just have to watch out. Yeah, okay. Wait, aren't you able to climb up there? Yeah, maybe with Luigi. And Luigi and the cat suit. And the topics of the cat suit... 
Yeah, the cat suit is just a cheating device in this game. And the tanuki leaf with peach as well, considering you can double float. Also, if the boomerang bros throws throws his boomerang and doesn't manage to catch it again, if you stun him, for example, ah, damn it! Okay, it didn't work. He die. All right, another peach copy. Wait, I've only gotten two out of this. Three stars? Maybe I've missed one? Or am I stupid? You just need to collect all the coins here, which is really easy. Nope, it's fine. Okay. As said, it's uh, sometimes a bit hard to line up all the clones. Like for right, like right now, one gets separated pretty badly, but as long as they're still online, whoop! Okay, we already lost one, which isn't too bad. We just need two, I think. And that's another star. Nice. The music here is good too. And done. Great! Yeah, it's always worth having a cat suit with you just in case you need to climb up anywhere. And having a tanuki leaf and a cat suit at once, like a cat suit in the inventory and a tanuki leaf equipped, is probably one of the easiest ways to just clear any level anywhere. Right, and now we have Big Bounce Byway with maybe Toad? Ha! <laughs> Predicted. I'm not sure how the um, computer generates the whole randomness. Computers aren't good at generating true, true randomness. Okay, I still want the... Yep, that should be fine. So, I do guess that... After a certain point... Ah, those trampolines are also new. Not really items, more like enemies. They haven't appeared in any game since, na uh, since this game, I think. If I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, but since computers are bad at generating true randomness, they do use algorithms and codes to do that. Also, how didn't that hit the other two? I would like to keep the cat suit, thank you. Oh yeah, uh, this mystery box has us just transforming one into a trampoline, the other two are fake. Oh, I missed one! Okay, I can probably just go back. Hopefully. Let's see... Ah, okay, hold on. Also good to have a cat suit here, I told ya! Oh, I messed it up though. Just ground pound, jump, climb up, wait for the trampolines to return, and claw your way back. I'm not sure if you can actually get over there without the cat suit, and I'm not sure why they wouldn't give you a cat suit in a level you need a cat suit for, but mm, whatever. I don't know. I'm also not sure where the stamp is. Oh wait, I'm I'm sure where it is. That's just at the end. Also, I'm thinking about um, streaming some Pokemon Scarlet and just shiny hunting. But I'm not entirely sure, like, I wanna get a few shinies there, but I really don't have much Herba Mystica and all. S and really, I don't wanna stream all the time, like, not every day. Hold on, just... Easy. <laughs> if I can say it like that.
One up. This game is, you know, on the Switch really quick because the saving isn't done, you know, with a loading screen that you have to click OK on, but instead is done by just... Also, this is Mario. Ah. Okay. Got it wrong. This mystery house is all about running. But this is very easy. For this one, you just gotta book it over there and do a small cat scratch or dive. But this one, you gotta run away from the bullet bill. This was, you know, maybe an inspiration for the Mario Odyssey uh, level where you get chased by the T Rex in New Donk City. You know, but. The teal mask has been quite a bit of fun, and I am thinking about, you know, getting a few shinies. But I'll see. Considering I'm not a big shiny hunter, I'd have to learn the whole thing. And I don't really want to stream every day, like only twice or thrice a week maybe. But seeing as I have loads of time, I might as well. I mean, Pikmin 1 is up first, considering that I haven't even, you know, halfway finished the game. Here you just run, jump, claw swipe and collect the last star. Simple, easy and quick. <sighs> Alright, time for the next level. Ten more stars and we've gotten over a hundred now. We're approaching the one-third mark. I'm just... 127 would be just over one-third. So we need 25 more stars. Eight more levels and one more singular level. Uh, one more level with one singular star. Spike's Lost City. This one is a bit annoying because you do need a cat suit for at least one of the stars I can remember. But it's also shorter than I think it is. I'm not sure if that makes sense. But like the level looks very large. Okay, the stab is back here. Then it's one of the stars. Um, but you do get enough cat suits in order to... Oh, this is another easy one. Because the spikes are incapable of activating these things. And you can just stand there and be safe, doing nothing, literally. On the Wii U, I can imagine the speedrun for the um, 380 stars actually being a bit faster sometimes. Not in all levels, because loading times in this game are far quicker on the Switch. But generally, you know, you have the touch screen, you can just... Um, so to speak, wiggle your finger and the whole um, coloring panel thing will be done with no effort. Yeah, for this one you just need to watch out for these falling things. I think the pattern is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, so one, um, both of the spikes that throw the small bars throw them twice, and then the one that throws the big bar throws them once. But that's generally not too hard to learn. Also, this is what you need the cat bell for. Ah, uh, that could have gone wrong, but I kind of expected to land there. You can also skip some platforms quite easily. Alright. Yeah, I expected to get hit some time, but at least I didn't get hit before this one. And done. So, like... Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good time. I really don't know what to say. You know, I try talking about random topics, but nothing comes to mind sometimes. Whatever. So yeah, for streams, Pikmin 1 is up first, and I think I should be limiting myself to only streaming on... Oh, there's a pipe down here. 
and of course the next um, boss, but still. I should limit myself to... Oh! A mini boss fight again. Streaming on, I think, Saturday and Sunday for a few hours in the afternoon. At least for, for me in the afternoon. Ouch. That's a little unfortunate, but we still got him. Hooray! Easy, I would say. But yeah, Pikmin 1 should be done soon, I guess. Soon-ish. And I think this gives us a... Oh, this is a fairy stamp house. Cool. I'm not sure if there's one in each world of those, but it could be. Oh, there's Pixeluigi again, but no birds this time. Alright, this is the blue fairy. Hello, Pixeluigi. And there he goes. Okay, time to take on the fourth boss. Now I'm not gonna make the part shorter. I'm actually gonna play through a bit of World 5 while I'm at it. I think 3D World has done a lot of things right. The levels are pretty large, but not too slow to play through. If you know what you're doing. Right? Um, and more importantly, the worlds are really nice uh, and well designed. And most of them, except World 1 and 2, have their own... Music. I thought it would be Mario, but fine enough. Alright, there we are. Big lava castle. Oh! Right off the bat, we get to see the rock dudes again. And a bunch of Goombas. I think I fell in there once. Also, this guy, while trying to turn around, just rolls into the lava. Also, these um, rocks kind of look like... Geodude? Or... Um, Graveler? Some form of... Probably rather like Golem, but without the legs. You know, the Pokemon. Oh yeah, right. The stamp is up here. Yeah. And the mystery boxes over here. The mystery boxes are also pretty cool. Because they always pose a challenge according to the level. Oh, um... Yeah! Okay, I just wanted the cat bell. And in we go! Oh, there was a hidden block there, but I really didn't need that. Ooh, and there he is! With the little Geo dudes! Golem! His name is not actually Golem, but like. He could very well be. You need to throw the rock dudes and preserve them. Okay, this is actually pretty much optimal. <laughs> Speedrunner instincts kicking in. Because you don't want them to get hit by him. So you can chuck them all three and he doesn't have to do any of the whole um, animations. Yeah, but this is essentially the pattern that speedrunners want to get. But you have to throw them at times, so they don't uh, come out again and hurt you. But yeah, pretty good. One, two, three. And that's World 4 done. And like, with unoptimal strats, 24 minutes. <laughs> around. Of course, like, the speedruns clear this in like... I don't know how little. I haven't watched a speedrun of this game in a while, and especially not the 100% speedrun, but 
We'll see about that. Nice. 109 stars. And she just builds us another glass pipe to go over to world 5. An ocean world. Very cool. I think I'll be taking on... Also, what's really great is that each world has its own little track. Unless you consider world 1 and world 2's track the same. Oh, there's a pipe here. Oh, yeah, right. I think right here you do unlock some shortcuts. For example... The golden train! And... Behind that thing is another shortcut, which leads you to World 3. Interesting, but not technically necessary, considering you can literally port to any world by using the map. And because I don't want to start on World 5 until the next part. Oh, and to World 1. I think there's also... I'm not sure if there's a warp point to World 7. But, who knows. I mean, we have a warp point to world 1, 3, and 5. So, who knows. And, right here, you get the golden Bowser train. It's from Bowser! This is really funky. I mean, you don't get to choose your character, which is quite sad. But the gold train has money. Loads of it. Coming directly from the casinos that Bowser has managed to set up completely legally. You get all the money you could ever want. I'm not sure if it's possible to get every single coin, but I'm sure it's kind of not. Considering that you'd have to have like four players playing the whole thing. But it's very fun to just see every coin stack up in your inventory. Money, 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 money. It's like Mr. Krabs said, money, 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 money. Also, when you find Captain Toad, he has a button that shoots out these coins. Also, the reason... Also, this looks really cool. The reason I thought you could go into this pipe is because well, this one's just exhaling pure gold smoke. I can't imagine that being useful. You can't enter that one too? I, th I, will, I swear there was one train where you could go in that pipe. But you get one of these free casinos. At least I get 100 coins, which is 101 up. Your max is 777. Woohoo! Alright. And with that, I'd say I'm gonna end the part. Considering I have already unlocked World 5 and played through the entirety of World 4 plus the gold train today, that's a pretty good rate at which I'm going if I'm doing like a world or a world and a bit per part. It's just good. The worlds are gonna take longer, so it's not gonna be staying at that pace, but generally I hope I can keep it up. Alrighty. So, as I said, streams will continue on Saturday and Sunday. And once I'm gonna be back to studying, I am most likely going to stream longer. So I'm gonna start streaming earlier if I have the time for it. And... You know, I'm gonna try and stream like for four hours or three maybe, instead of just one or two. But I'll have to do it operatively, so yeah. And I'm probably not gonna be releasing many videos. I'm gonna try and edit some stuff together. Maybe some stream highlights, maybe some other stuff, I'm not sure. Maybe some Pokemon Scarlet and Violet shiny. so I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with that. But once I have time, I'm gonna let let's play things again, alright? So, thank you for watching. Have a nice day, morning, evening, night, whenever you're watching this. And stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.